Adolfo from Portainer here. So what about deploying Portainer on a canonical charmed Kubernetes cluster? We've seen how to do this on microk 8 so that you can check on this link above here. But charmed Kubernetes is an entirely different environment. Canonical charmed Kubernetes is demanding in terms of resources and is usually deployed on a cloud provider like AWS, GCP, or Azure. You can also use Oracle Cloud, Rackspace, and, and Cloud Sigma. Finally, there's the option of doing a local deployment, but you have to make sure you have the right infrastructure to do that. So I'm dividing this video in three chapters. Chapter one is the initial configuration to install the tools to set up the charmed Kubernetes cluster. Chapter two is how to deploy OpenBS, an impressive storage technology available for Kubernetes. Chapter three is how to deploy Portainer and set up the access ports on your cloud provider. In this video, I will use Azure. So if you already have termed Kubernetes cluster deployed, you can jump to chapter three. So let's start by installing the tools. Um, it's basically Juju and kubectl. Okay, and sudo snap install. So these two should be enough. Oh, I forgot to put classic. classic. Okay. So there you go, Juju and kubectl. You might want to install if you don't already have this. Um, sudo apt install and map. And we'll see later on why I use nmap. Okay, so everything is fine. So it's two, two things that you have to have, Juju and kubectl. So now we're going to um, set up the credentials um, on my Azure subscription. So, Juju, credential, Azure. I'm just gonna call it Azure, give it a name of Azure. I will want the East and West region, um, the authentication type interactive. Here I put my subscription ID that I have with Azure, where I'm going to deploy this uh, cluster. So I receive a set of instructions. I have to open this link and enter this code. Okay, so let's paste the link. It's gonna ask for the code. I'm gonna copy here my terminal. Okay, so my account is this one. Credentials have been added successfully. Close the window. Um, okay, so now I have my uh, video configured with the required credentials. Um, and now let's bootstrap with Juju a controller. Let's call it, um, let's say, charmed zero one. Sorry, I forgot to include Azure here. Yeah, you have to tell Juju which um, cloud provider you're gonna use. So Juju Bootstrap Azure and a name. I call, I'm calling it Charm to Zero One. This takes some time, anything between four to 10 minutes. So I'm gonna pause the video and come back when it's finished. Okay, so our Bootstrap finished. Um, we called it Charm to Zero One. And now we would deploy the charmed Kubernetes cluster. Um, so on Canonical's website, you would probably see this charm, which is um, you know the standard uh, charmed Kubernetes deployment. So this is quite big. It's probably going to um, deploy like nine or ten machines, I think. So I don't need such a huge environment for this demonstration. I'm going to use a smaller version that is it was de was developed basically for um, testing purposes or you know development, and it's uh, it's called Kubernetes Core. It brings up one master and one worker node, 
and I'm just going to add two more worker nodes to this environment. So I can start with um, Juju Deploy and the bundle, which is called Kubernetes Core 1200. So if you go to your cloud dashboard, you will see all the resources that are being built on this uh, controller. And I might just go ahead and add two more worker units. This takes a long, long time. Uh, anything between 25 to 30 minutes. Um, a regular deployment will take even longer. So I'll just um, leave this running. First, first, I'm going to add more workers, and I'm going to leave this running. Um, if you want to keep a status screen with how your deployment is going, you can use this command, which is watch-c, which is for color on watch, juju status, color. So this shows me the status of my deployment. You see that everything is still being built and pending. So it's ready when we see all the workloads active and here agents idle. So I'm gonna pause the video now. Probably gonna grab a cup of coffee, uh, catch up with my email and just monitor this. Um, for me, it's taken at least 25 minutes. Um, so this might vary a bit, but I doubt it will go anything under 20 minutes. So um, let me pause and we'll be back soon. Okay, so my cluster deployment finished. Um, as I had mentioned earlier, uh, we see all my all the workloads active here on this column. The agents are idle. Okay, we can um, continue the first chapter of this video, which is two little quick instructions. Mm, well, make sure you have first on your home folder a folder called Q with K. If you don't, please make sure to create this folder so we can finally download the config file required to manage the cluster with kubectl. So with this command juju scp, we copy from the master node the config file and we um, put a copy of this config file under the .cube folder. Let's just run a quick test. kubectl get nodes. And here we see all three nodes, all three machines have been running. Okay, so here in chapter one, we finished uh, with installing all the tools, juju kubectl, and deploying a charmed Kubernetes cluster on Azure with three nodes. Hello, so we're going to start now chapter two, which is the deployment of OpenBS on the Charmed Kubernetes cluster. Um, the reason I like to use OpenBS is because of its replication model. So for instance, if I lose a node and that node by some chance is one that is running Portainer, I know that um, OpenBS is going to lift up the second or third node that has the same data just there, replicated up and running nicely. So please take a look at the, the OpenEPS project. It's got tons of other features and possibilities. Um, and yeah, so let's start by the first thing, which is a prereq for OpenEPS. And that is um, bringing up the ice because diamond on your, on your server. So um, for this, I'm going to use a secure shell and just send the command by the secure shell to enable the iSCSI diamond on, on my server. And for those who are lazy like me, what you can do is just in one line, just uh, do the same for the other machines, just by using double ampersand. Um, and that's gonna send the same uh, systems control enable now iSCSI D throughout my other machines. So if you add a machine to your cluster, make sure you enable this prereq so you can have OpenEPS running smoothly on your environment. Okay, so OpenEPS likes to run as a privileged service. So the second thing I'm gonna do is allow um, uh, privileged services on my master node. Um, but even though I've uh, enabled this option, I still have to change 
the main OpenEPS YAML file. Um, I will have to modify it slightly and change the privileged to false. Um, so I'm here changing the privileged string to false. Um, and with this, I can deploy OpenEPS on my cluster by running the kubectl apply OpenEPS operator. Okay, well, that's going to deploy OpenEPS. And if you want to check the status of the deployment, um, you can always do this with the get parts come option of kubectl. So if I type in kubectl get parts, then base OpenBS, I can, it hasn't been created yet, so it's still deploying. Um, okay, let's run this once more. And okay, there you go. Um, OpenEBS is um, being deployed. It's creating the containers. And there you go. So we have Open. EBS deployed with all its containers. Now let's check the storage classes that Open EBS uh, brings for us. Let's see, kubectl, get storage classes. Um, and the one we're going to use as default is the Open EBS Java default. So as you can see, it uses iSCSI here. And so we want to make sure we use the Open EBS Java default as our default storage class. This is also a requirement to deploy Portainer. So um, I'm just going to patch the storage class to make sure that OpenBS Java default is our default storage class. And as you can see, it's now set as default. If I don't have this uh, flag set here for this, uh, for this storage class, um, I won't be able to deploy a Portainer. It's a prereq. So OK, so OpenBS has been deployed. We can go to Chapter 3. And here, I'm going to show you how to deploy Portainer. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to deploy the node port uh, method of Portainer using kubectl. As you can see, I just run kubectl apply, creating a namespace called Portainer uh, with the following uh, Portainer YAML file, which is a node port uh, option. It's creating the the Portainer uh, namespace and deploying the application, we can check the status of this by running get pod namespace Portainer is creating the container um, get pod namespace open EBS. Uh, and as you can see, um, open EBS is has enabled three replicas Portainer um, application. Um, once this is finished, we will see Portainer up and running. It takes a couple of minutes. It can take up to four to five minutes. It depends on your environment. So once it's, um, I'm going to pause the video here. Once it's finished, I'll come back to continue with the Portainer deployment. Let's check how our containers are doing. Okay, so all our uh, replicas have been deployed. Let's check Portainer itself. kubectl, get pod, space Portainer. Typo. Okay, so Portainer is up and running. I'm going to check if the port is uh, open on my cluster. So a good way to do that is with um, SSH. But, um, Just copy this juju, SSH, entities. It can be on any of the nodes. And um, let's check it's S if port 3777 is up on the um, machine. So, yes, we can see it's. Uh, port 3777. This is the default Portainer port. And um, a nice little trick to check the public IP of the master machine where you might want to load your Portainer 
um, interface. It's just by typing juju ssh kubernetes dash master, and it will bring once it closes the connection the public IP. So I'll put this IP address here on our browser with port 3777. It should not work because this this port is not open and on my cloud environment. So you see, I won't be able to load Portainer just by typing the public IP and the Portainer port. So what you would have to do is open the corresponding port on your cloud provider that points to the virtual network of your cluster. And I'll show you how to do this on Azure. Uh, so let's go to all resources and look for the Juju default uh, network group, network security group. Um, I'm going to open this network security group and go to inbound security rules. And here I'm going to add a rule that opens that port um, to my um, and translates that port to my internal virtual network where I have my charmed Kubernetes clusters deployed. So the source is going to be uh, external IPs from the internet. The port range can be any. Make sure the destination is your virtual network and the port is. 3777. TCP. You can leave that priority there. If you want to it or not, let's turn it to you. And let's call it um, Portainer. Let's add the security rule. Um, although you will see a pop up saying that it has been um, successfully created, it still takes another couple of minutes for that to be active on your cluster. Um, so you might want to check in map if you have that installed on your machine. Um, the port is open. Let's get master IP. Let's see. And it is open. So the rule has been successfully deployed. I can go back to my browser and try this again. And there you go. Uh, Portainer is up and running. So um, the first uh, setup screen for Portainer is to create an administrator user. Just change the admin name to Joe. And put my password twice and connect the Portainer uh, instance to my local Kubernetes environment, which is the one we just deployed. I will not work with the networking options for my Kubernetes configuration for now. I'm just going to enable the metric servers features and um, enable the OpenEPS Java default uh, storage option with multiple access and body expansion. Um, save the configuration and I can see the cluster here. Let's click on this endpoint and go to cluster. Uh, and you can see our three machines up and running very nicely. And and this is it. Um, let's just deploy quickly an application. Let's, I don't know, let's start with MySQL. And uh, just for the proof of concept of this deployment, um, I'll pull the 5.6 image, I'll call it uh, MySQL for a stack. Make sure you add this environment variable, otherwise this is uh, not going to work. Um, this is uh, required to be able to pull this image and deploy it on your cluster. You can add a persistent folder here, the default for SQL is for a SQL, give it like 50 gigabytes of storage on the storage class we selected. And um, if you want to publish the port, this is 3306.4 port from a SQL. I'm just going to leave it internal only. Deploy the application. And um, I've got a table settings here on the container and allow for refresh. 
So it's 10 seconds. This table is going to uh, load every 10 seconds. So we can check um, the status of this deployment here and replicate it. So um, what will happen is that OpenEPS is again going to open um, three uh, replica sets for MySQL. As you can see, there's another three replica sets for this uh, new application here. The first three ones are for, um, sorry, these, sorry, um, this is actually for Pertainer, so it's up and running. These are the new ones that are being created for MySQL, and now they're all up and running. And we should see MySQL also successfully replicated in our cluster, and there it is. So um, let's open MySQL and go to, for instance, the blogs of this, and we can see it's successfully deployed and uh, loaded on my cluster. So, okay. Um, I did warn this was a long video but and what we did here is that we set up the necessary commands to enable a charm kubernetes cluster on a cloud provider uh, deployed open ebs uh, deployed portainer open the ports on the cloud provider and now we ran a demonstration of adding an application via portainer on this charmed kubernetes so i hope you enjoyed this video stay tuned for our next how to's Thank you very much.